Hello, I'm Dr. Bonley. I'm president of Magnetico and also president of the North American Academy of Magnetic Therapy. The North American Academy of Magnetic Therapy is a group of scientists that present papers and do research on trying to determine what the effects of magnetism are on the human body. This, all of this new research and interest in magnetism really was sparked by the cosmonauts when they came back after a year and a third out in space and they had up to 80% of their bone density uh, gone from the being out that long out of the Earth's magnetic field and just in the sun's magnetic field, which is a, about half of ours. This problem was solved by putting an artificial magnetic field in their space capsules. Now, having read about this experiment and the results, we made an experiment of our own. We took and built a cage out of mu metal. Now, mu metal blanks out magnetic fields. We put six mice in this cage and watched to see what would happen. To our amazement, these little mice went into slow motion. You could roll them over with your finger and they would barely get up. One of them could not stand the stress and he died, but the others compensated by eating huge amounts of food and becoming very obese. Now, this shows maybe why we're having such a problem with obesity these, these days. Now, Valerie Hunt, a researcher at UCLA, also having looked at the same experiments, said, I wonder what effect it would be on humans. So she made a huge mu cage, seven foot by seven foot, and put two students in there. She had them connected with an EEG and an EKG and electromyocardiogram and little sensors all over their body to determine the polarity or how what the voltage was on their uh, on the skin. Now, uh, when she closed the door and to her amazement, in about 15 minutes, they began to sob uncontrollably. She asked them, "What is the problem?" They said, "They said we feel like we're falling apart." And then the machines, the computer began to you know what was going on. First of all, they were trying to get energy out of each other and they became very positive and negative uh, where they were touching each other with the attempt by the body to get energy from the adjoining bodies. The second uh, thing that happened was that they began to lose control in their feet. And as this crept up to the body, when it became, got close to the heart, uh, the signals began to come from the electrocardiogram that there was difficulty and she took them out of the big mu cage. Now in talking to her about this experiment, I said, what would have happened if you would have left them there longer? She said, if I would have left them there much longer, they probably would have been vegetables. So this gives you a little idea what would happen in a zero magnetic field because that's what she had created with this huge mu cage. Now, Dr. Gumiel, who is head of Project Genesis uh, for the World Health Organization um, back several years ago, I thought, well, what would happen if we increased the magnetic field? So he took uh, 23 different kinds of insects and put them in a cage and put the equivalent number in a cage in another room where there was no magnetic field and increased the magnetic field under the insects by about 10 times what the earth magnetic field is. He watched this, these insects over a period of time and guess what happened? The insects in the magnetic field lived five times longer than the insects that weren't in the earth, that were just in the earth magnetic field. So when we discussed this experiment, because I had provided the magnetic field, he said, I wonder what will happen with human tissue. And so the next experiment was with human tissue cultures, and they lived two and a half times longer, the cells in the magnetic field, uh, which was 10 times our present Earth field. Now, this gets to be pretty serious when you consider what NASA has made an announcement back about four years ago in September that the Earth's magnetic field was declining and we would be to zero magnetic field within the next 800 years. Now think about that, folks. Uh, we're not going to live that long, but life on this planet is in jeopardy. And as we lose our magnetic field, uh, we could be looking at some of the symptoms that we've seen here from the experiments that's gone on. But we need to find out 
why we're losing our magnetic field. So this is where we start into our next phase of this uh, lecture. First of all, uh, why did NASA, how did NASA know that we were losing our magnetic field? Well, the U.S. Geological Survey has been keeping a record for the last 170 years, and they've found that we are on a steady decline of about 5% per 100 years. The second thing is there has been pottery dug up from different times in, in Earth's history, and because the iron in the pottery will align itself to whatever magnetic field, because they're little magnetite crystals, like compass needles, they'll align, they could tell that we've been losing our magnetic field here uh, at the rate of about 5% per 100 years. Also, they've taken uh, the lava from volcanoes and, and test uh, the lava flows to see what the alignment of the magnetite was in there. And, and comparing with uh, man-made sa uh, samples, they could determine what the magnetic field was at any given time. This study is called hysteresis, the study of hysteresis. And this is how scientists uh, determine the age of rocks. And they determine it by the degree of alignment of the magnetite crystals. But the most interesting of these studies came when several of the nations of the Earth went and drilled down in the alluvial fans of the major rivers of the Earth. When they did that, uh, they were coring up, in other words, taking a cross-section uh, of, the, of the mud as it was laid down, uh, as it washed out from the rivers. And because of the difference in layering in winter and summer, uh, they read it like rings on a tree. And as they went down through the alluvial fans, they found, uh, again, that we have a dramatic loss. And a matter of fact, we go in cycles of about five to six hundred thousand years in which we lose our magnetic field and then we gain it back again. And uh, every time that there was a loss of magnetic field, there was a layer of fossils. Now this doesn't look good, folks, because if uh, we're going to become fossils in 800 years, uh, that's a pretty scary thought. Now Let's have a look at why we gain and why we lose our magnetic field on Earth. As you can see, the Earth's magnetic field uh, comes out of the southern hemisphere and goes in the northern hemisphere. And it's caused by the movement of the lava underneath the crust of the Earth. In that terms, it's going counterclockwise, or the opposite direction that the Earth's crust is spinning. Because it is ionic and because uh, it's going in a big ring, then it becomes a current loop. And when you have a current loop, then you always have a magnetic field. And this magnetic field then is generated by the Earth and is very stable. But the problem is the Earth's crust is cooling, this, which is a scientific fact. And as the Earth's crust cools, it adds more lava underneath the crust of the Earth. And as that lava congeals there, it is made of a large percentage iron. And iron, of course, is a much better conductor of magnetism than air or the other rocks. And so what we have is the action of like a keeper on a magnet, with the Earth's magnetic field being uh, diverted underneath the crust of the Earth rather than going up to the crust of the Earth and making our, our own magnetosphere. Now, this, again, we found from the deep sea core sampling to uh, keep adding until we lose our magnetic field. And then when we lose our magnetic field, we lose our ozone layer and our protection from the cosmic radiation of the sun. And we have a heating up of the Earth's planet. And the lava, of course, melts off again when the crust of the Earth heats up enough. And, and then we restore the normal magnetic field and life can begin again. 